Hello out there, Facebook fans. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Josh, I'm crew leader and South Coast coordinator with Trail Keepers of Oregon. And with us today is author Connie Soper, who wrote the book, Exploring the Oregon Coast Trail. It's an invaluable research, resource for the Oregon Coast Trail that I, I use quite frequently. Connie, thank you for taking a little bit of time and joining us today. I trust sure. you're well. Yes. Excellent. Well, you know, the first question that I have for you is uh, what inspired you to write a guidebook for the Oregon Coast Trail? Well, uh, I was inspired to write the book after I hiked the trail and there was no guidebook to, at least for the way I wanted to hike it, which was as a series of day hikes with some more specific information about what to expect in terms of tides and river crossings and things like that. So after I hiked it, um, I had taken notes uh, along the way and I, uh, I decided to write the book because I thought it would be helpful for other people um, who wanted to hike the trail. And I also became very interested in the history of the Oregon coast, especially how we happen to get uh, public beaches, and, which is pretty amazing. And this hike would not be possible. Um, um, if we had fences and barriers and private property um, to um, prohibit us from using the beaches. So um, I decided to, to write the book, which meant I had to hike the trail again to make sure that I had everything correct and I got a, a GPS and uh, more accurately tracked the specific hikes and it was the GPS data that generated the maps in the book. And um, so you know, it was, it was a period of about three years, I guess, it took me to write it. Well, it's an incredibly valuable resource that I use quite a bit in researching uh, for uh, my position. And uh, I know my, uh, my usual co-host and frequent cohort and coworker, Brandon, uh, will actually be hiking some or all of the Oregon Coast Trail uh, here a bit later this month. And I know that's that what you said. Yeah, yeah, he was using your book as a reference also. Yeah. Um, I understand that you are heading what is called a gap committee. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was curious if you could touch a bit on what a gap committee is and how you came to lead one. And I'll preface that by saying that the Oregon Coast Trail is plagued by a, a series of gaps in the trail where you're forced to walk on the sometimes non-existent shoulder um, of Highway 101. Exactly. And so after I wrote the book, I decided to become more involved in advocacy to trying to address those gaps. And one of the things I did with some other with some other people who that, um, who were like-minded uh, trail enthusiasts is that we we um, were able to sponsor some legislation in the, uh, about three years ago that um, where the Oregon legislature passed um, a bill that requires the Oregon State Parks because they manage the Oregon Coast Trail to um, complete an action plan to identify strategies to it to mediate or address those gaps. And uh, so uh, that, that planning process has been going on for a couple of years and they've broken it up into, I think there are three, three sections, North Coast, Central Coast, and South Coast. And they've identified where there are gaps, which usually is, means walking on the highway, but there are, sometimes there are other types of gaps too, such as river crossings. Um, and, uh, I also had been working for several years uh, because I spend a lot of time in Manzanita. And I, I realized that the first significant gap you come to in the Oregon Coast Trail is uh, from Neocani into Manzanita. Right. And, and um, so I don't know, I just started getting, um, saying, why can't we do something about this right here you know, I think the community would be supportive and it would be, it would be well used. So I started to work with um, the city of Manzanita. They applied for a grant through Oregon State Parks to, to plan for and construct that, that new trail. 
um, between Neocani Mountain and Manzanita. And I guess I just by default got assigned to be the leader of that gap because I'd been doing so much work on it already. And as you know, it's just about, we're just about complete. It's been yep. six, seven years in the making. It's really taken a lot of tw literally twists and turns, but we're almost there. Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. So speaking of building a new trail, I was wondering what kind of trail work experience you have. Absolutely none. Mm -hmm. uh, all my all my work on trails has been kind of on paper and uh, you know and the planning and advocacy part of it and actually that's one reason I'm excited to go down there next weekend is because of all the work I've done uh, behind the scenes um, I'm happy to actually you know learn a little bit about um, trail building it'll only be one or two two days but at least I'll I can say I was there to help build it. And you can learn a lot in one or two days. And uh, I would say to not discount that work that you have done behind the scenes for with advocacy. That's, I mean, without that kind of effort, we can't get to the getting the shovels in the ground. Right. What a lot of us consider the fun stuff. Um, you know, it requires a lot of, uh, of behind the scenes work. And so yeah, I know... I, as someone who gets to go out and work on trails, frequently very much appreciate, and them now involved a lot in the project management, I very much appreciate the kind of work that goes into setting that thing up. Yeah, well, a lot of, lot, there are four separate landowners for that two and a half mile uh, trail. And so, you know, a lot of people were uh, involved in making it happen. Yeah, it's an exciting effort to see uh, come together and uh, and get, accessible for folks here uh, later in the summer. Uh, so how did you hear about or how did you get involved with Trail Keepers of Oregon? Well, uh, originally I met uh, Paul Gerald, who at the time, I, I believe he's still a board member of uh, TKO, and uh, he is also a, a trail guide writer, and um, he was really helpful to me. Um, as I was working on my book, he gave me very good advice and and um, helpful information about self-publishing a book. So I talked with him a little bit about my process of and, and as I was as I was working on the book and its distribution. And in, in the course of our conversations, I learned a little bit about what TKO was doing and um, met. And at about that time, uh, Steve. Kruger got hired as executive director, which before, up until then they had not had um, staff. It was just a, strictly a volunteer working board. So things really took off, I think, when Steve got got hired. And yeah, he, it was a, a volunteer uh, before Steve was hired for just a little bit. And yeah, yeah things really ramped up uh, when Absolutely. he came on board. And I'm also a member of the board of the Oregon Coast Visitors Association, okay. and they've been they've been great, very supportive of the Oregon Coast Trail, and in fact, they're helping to fund your your position, I believe, as well as Brandon's. Indeed. And, and, have, and have have, I mean, they have really um, come to the table financially as well as um, you know promoting the trail in other ways too. So. Um, so it was, I don't know, it was all those things came together. And I really have to say that um, I remember in particular one meeting where we, um, trail, Steve came with me to a meeting at the um, Lower Nehalem Community Trust because we needed their permission, to, but primarily the trail goes through their property. And, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a lot of um, a lot of stakeholders or landowners are reluctant to provide permission because they're concerned about ongoing maintenance and so um, when they were got the assurance that you know TKO would would be there um, to prov not only to, to provide maintenance but I think to provide you know it's just a community presence um, for the for the trail that it really turned things around and so it's been TKO we, I, I don't believe this would be happening without without TKO's in, involvement and in, um, they're having, you know, been at the table during those early discussions. Well, we're delighted to be a part of the process. Um, it, it sounds, it sounds like a, a really fortuitous degree of circumstance, but I think it really speaks to the interconnectivity 
of outdoor advocacy in this state. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've seen it as I have, as I volunteered more with TKO, as I went through an internship, and now as part of the staff, I see more and more players come up repeatedly and people who are really invested in stewarding our public spaces. Uh, and it's really a delightful thing to be a part of. So um, I'm excited to be involved in it and I'm, I'm glad it all came together like it did. I, so speaking to Trailkeeper's role with the Oregon Coast Trail, what is sort of your vision for our continued involvement in stewarding the OCT? Well, as I mentioned, um, I think having TKO at the table early in the discussions of even as trails are being planned and as landowners are giving permission, whether it's a public agency or a private landowner, um, for the trail to go through their property, um, knowing that there will be a pr professional presence there to help um, steward the building of the trail and the ongoing maintenance of it um, is, is a huge asset. So I, I really see take, TKO taking a, a role in all um, parts of trail planning and construction and ongoing maintenance. And, you know, re, um, recruiting volunteers at the local level and getting people um, kind of excited and involved um, in the trail. Uh, I know Susan did a great job of that when she was starting things up in um, Manzanita. And um, so, you know, I, I, I guess both those things, just having that professional presence, but also um, generating some volunteer support at the local level. Yeah, we're really committed to to promoting local stewardship. You know, mm -hmm. we want people who care about these trails, that, that these are their trails that they use all the time. Right. You know, we want them to have a vested interest in, in helping us to maintain and uphold them. Um, and that's uh, Brandon's doing uh, some good work and continuing that. And we're, we're creeping, creeping further south as much as we can, given all, all the present circumstances. Uh, pivoting from the serious business of trail construction, uh, I had a couple of lighthearted questions just to get a, uh, just to get to know you a little better. Um, what if, what could you describe to me what your ideal vacation might look like? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's a hiking vacation and I've gone on many wonderful hiking vacations. Last year I went to, uh, Northern England and hiked Hadrian's Wall. Um, and you know, where you go from one little village to the next um, and you know with incredible scenery and history um, and I've you know I've, I've, I've hiked in different countries in Japan and um, Italy and England and also just you know I go every year I go on a, a to a different part of Oregon with, with a group of friends we've done it for 10 years um, and so this year we're going to uh, Crater Lake area, but we've, you know, we've been all over the state and um, we just go for a week and do hikes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a, um, I don't rough it. I don't like, I don't camp, but, but we, you know, we, we, we just find a simple lodging and do day hikes. And so that's my idea of a great vacation. Sounds delightful to me, and, and I suspect that it will be delightful for an awful lot of our audience. Uh, the final question that I'll leave you with, uh, Connie, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? Well, I had to give that some thought, but um, I would be a deciduous tree, uh, maybe, maybe a maple, a vine maple maybe, um, because they, because of how they, change and reflect the seasons and every every season is beautiful and it's that's you know it, it kind of those seasons show themselves mirror themselves in in a tree starting with a little new life in the spring to the fullness of summer the beautiful uh changing color of the leaves in the fall and then even in the winter you know just to see their shapes of the bare le of the bare trunks is a beautiful thing so i like that i would be I like that very much. Uh, Connie, I want to thank you for your time. I want to encourage people to check out her book, Exploring thank the you. Oregon Coast Trail, sold wherever you find books. Um, before we leave, I want to give a quick shout out to the Oregon Coast Visitor Association for kindly funding 
my position and an awful lot of the work that Trail Keepers of Oregon gets to do out there on the Oregon Coast Trail. Um, as always, keep an eye out on our Facebook page for uh, any more exciting interviews and presentations. And we've got in-person volunteer activities going on in the North Coast. We're looking to start ramping them up in the, in the Valley area, you know, as, as we can kind of tighten up our policies. And uh, we're just going to keep, keep engaging and, and keep reaching out to folks and keep the drumbeat alive. Um, again, I appreciate your time, Connie. Thank and you. Thanks, everybody, everybody out there on Facebook, have a good day and we'll see you next time.